The revelations of the last few days have showed that there is a good chance that Mr. Mueller has evidence that the President of the United States, Donald Trump, uh, is guilty of crimes uh, in two areas, violations of campaign finance laws and also the possible collaboration between the President of the United States and uh, the Russian government in influencing the election. That leaves us with the question, uh, can Mr. Mueller treat the President like any ordinary citizen? Can he request from the grand jury a criminal indictment of a sitting U.S. President? People disagree, scholars disagree, the constitutional text is silent. Many people think that Mr. Mueller is bound by the memos of the Office of Legal Counsel from previous administrations, and that keeps him from indicting a sitting U.S. president. On my view, that would be a travesty. A president is not above the law. Mr. Mueller, in my view, uh, has an independent role in uh, our government. He is investigating the president of the United States, and if he decides uh, that the president is in fact guilty of crimes. Uh, even if the memos cut the other way, we shouldn't allow memos written uh, by uh, employees of the previous administration office of legal counsel to decide this case. So it's the obligation of Mr. Mueller to try to make the indictment um, and to try to convince his superiors to allow him to do so because on my view the memos prohibiting him from doing so are wrong. But if he turns the documents over to the House of Representatives, that's a whole other set of considerations. Now that starts a very different process. Impeachment is not a criminal justice process. It's not simply a question of law. It's a political question of whether or not the president has uh, committed high crimes and misdemeanors. High crimes and misdemeanors also include degradations of the office. And it's up to the House of Representatives and the Senate uh, to think about that as well. One third possibility, aside from uh, indictment um, and or the process of impeachment, uh, might be a negotiated settlement. And if we look to the case of Israel, the uh, Israeli president uh, under the Israeli constitution clearly has immunity from prosecution while he or she is in office. And at one point, sitting Israeli president Katsov was accused uh, credibly of rape. And in that instance, uh, he used the immunity uh, to negotiate uh, for a lesser sentence. What that shows is that there is a possibility of um, a prosecutor, this happened in the Israeli case, uh, to uh, reach out to the President of the United States if he or she is accused of crimes and make part of the deal uh, uh, stepping down. Uh, that would avoid, of course, the immunity issue because there would be a voluntarily a volunteer uh, decision by the uh, President to step down. Now, in my view, uh, we have to be very careful about that uh, we don't want to allow uh, uh, the, the supposed immunity of a sitting president to allow uh, for a sentence that does not fit the crime. Uh, but certainly that is a possibility for Mr. Mueller is to negotiate with a uh, sitting U.S. president uh, accused of a crime uh, and to uh, agree uh, or, or negotiate for uh, a settlement that involves uh, stepping down from office. Hey, NBC News viewers, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on that button down here and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives. Thanks for watching.